Hello, welcome to the fifth in a series of films about the standard level organic topic. Um, the previous films have been quite short, I suppose. We've just been introducing some of the homologous series. This one is probably going to be a bit longer. I'm hoping it's not going to go on too long. But we're going to talk here about things called isomers, and in particular structural isomers. There are other types of isomers, but we're not worried about those in the standard level topic. And we're going to hopefully understand that our naming system needs to evolve a little bit in order to try and cope with these structural isomers. Okay, So we're going to do this for alkanes and alkenes containing up to six carbon atoms. OK, um, here's another definition for you. OK, um, As we've mentioned now a few times, it is possible for a molecular formula to be ambiguous, i.e. not to tell us very much about the structure of a molecule. So um, when a molecular formula is ambiguous, this tells us that that molecule exists as things called structural isomers. And structural isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula but different structural formulae. Okay? And we should understand what those terms mean by now. If we don't, it might be a good idea to go back and refresh your knowledge of them before you go any further. But that's the definition of what structural isomers are. It's important to remember. Now, one of the things that can confuse people, right, particularly when they're trying to decide what molecules are isomers of one another, is that we can draw structural formulas in different ways. And often, if you draw the displayed formula, or if you draw all the bonds out, it's much easier for people to get confused about whether two molecules are the same. Okay, so for example, I could draw propane, and once again, I'm not filling in the hydrogens here, I'm just leaving them as empty sticks, okay, but this is a bad, bad habit, okay, don't get into this habit. I can draw it in two different ways, and they might look different, okay. In actual fact, these two structural formulae are the same, and how can we tell that? Well, let's just check by writing the structural formula. That would be CH3, CH2, CH3, and this one is also CH3, CH2. CH3. So my point here really is, if you get confused easily, and I suppose you won't find out for a while, but we're going to draw some things out and see, see for yourself if you get confused by them, it might be better for you to try and decide if, mo if molecules have the same structural formula when you write it down, rather than when you draw it out. Okay? Because some people would say that these two are structural isomers, wrongly, Okay, because they look different, they look like they've got different structural formulae, but in actual fact those structural formulae are exactly the same as one another, they've just been drawn a little bit differently. Okay, so that's just something to watch out for. Anyway, um, structural isomerism in al alkanes to start with. So here we're going to be looking at the hydrocarbons that have only single bonds, and we're going to be seeing if the molecules can exist as structural isomers or not. So here is our molecular formula, C3HA. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and draw structural formulae that are different to one another. Okay? So I've got three carbons. I could draw them in one long chain. Okay? What are the alternatives to that? Okay? Well, I could draw a two-carbon chain and maybe have a one-carbon chain coming off that as a branch somewhere. Okay, so maybe here. But as we've just shown on the previous slide, these two molecules aren't different to one another. In actual fact, they've both got a continuous chain of three carbon atoms, okay, with no branches on it. And this is going to give us a bit of a hint as to how we're going to look for structural isomerism in alkanes, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to be looking for the longest chain what kind of branches there are, okay, so whether they've got one carbon in them or two or three, how many of the branches there are coming off the chain, and at what positions on the chain the branches are. Okay, now this probably seems a little bit obscure at the moment, but so let's have a look at a couple of examples. Here is the molecule which could be hexane. Okay, we're going to try and draw and name a few different structural isomers of it. Okay, so they're all going to have to have this molecular formula. What is, well, let's think about drawing all the possible isomers. If I'm going to be looking out for these things, what's the longest chain I can draw? Well, that would be six carbons in a row. Okay, 
and then that would be three carbons there, uh, sorry, three hydrogens there, two there, two there, two there, two there, and three there. And you can check for yourself that makes C6H14. Okay? There's no branches on there. Okay? So the longest chain has six carbons, so it's called hexane. Okay? And you might think, well, I knew that already. Okay? But let's have a look at another molecule that has this molecular formula, but isn't hexane. Okay, now how are we going to do that? Well, the, the only way you can have a longest chain of six is by having six carbons in a row. So the, the next longest chain we could potentially have would be five carbons in a row. Now we call five carbons in a row pentane. Right, so this molecule's name is going to be based on that. Even though it's got six carbons, because of the fact its longest chain is five carbons long, we're going to call it something pentane. Okay? We're left with one carbon atom. Okay? Now, if I just draw, I'm going to draw two five carbon chains because I know there's only two different places I can put that one carbon branch. Right? But let's just explain how I know that. Okay? If I put it on the end, then I just created a six carbon chain. So I can't do that. Okay? That's not going to be a five carbon chain anymore. I could put it on the second carbon along, so let's use a different colour now, so this is potentially one place it could go. Okay, I could put it there. And now I would have a branch of one carbon atom, which would be called a methyl branch, because it's got one carbon atom, and it would be attached to a pentane chain. So this would be called methyl pentane. Okay? Haven't yet fully named it, and we'll see why not in just a moment. Okay, I could also put that one carbon branch on the third carbon along, so I could put a CH3 here. Okay, I should have really said that that would be a CH3 if I put it there. Okay, but let's say I put it there instead. Now this is also pentane with a one carbon branch, so methyl. Okay, so branches end in "-ial", but start with how many carbons they've got. So this is also methyl pentane. So how can I make it clear which one of these two molecules I'm talking about? Well, I say which carbon it's attached to. Okay? This one is attached to the second one along, okay? 2-methylpentane. This one is attached to the third carbon along, so 3-methylpentane. Okay? So here are the names of two different structural isomers of C6H14. They're also structural isomers of hexane. Okay, because they've got the same molecular formula but different structural formulae. Okay, I, you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, I could also put it on the fourth carbon along. Well, no, I couldn't, and that's why I'm doing it in green, because if I put it on the fourth carbon along, it's just like putting it on the second carbon along. And I wouldn't call it 4-methylpentane, because I can call it 2-methylpentane, and that uses a lower number, which is also a key point. Now then, hopefully this is all making sense. I'm now going to just rub all of those out, and I'm going to do some four carbon chains because I've used up, I've done all the different five carbon possibilities. Let's go for four carbon possibilities. So if I drew four carbons, I've now got two carbons left. So here's my four carbon chain, which remember I call butane. Okay, so these molecules are always always going to have the ending butane because my longest chain is four carbons long. Okay, where could I possibly put my branches? Well, let's start off with branches of one carbon, so that's methyl groups, right? But bear in mind, I've got to have two of them. Okay, I can't put one on the end. I can't put it there and I can't put it there because that would be creating a chain of five and I wouldn't have a longest chain of four anymore, right? But I could put one here. Okay, I could put a CH3 there, so that, or I could put it there. Let's think about whether those two places are different to one another. Well, they're not, because they're both the second carbon from the end. But bear in mind, I've got two of these chains I have to use, two of these branches, I should say. Okay, so now because this chain has a longest chain of four, and two methyl groups, it's now not called methyl butane, but di methyl butane and where are the methyl groups where the branches are so this is how many there are two what kind methyl 
Where are they? They're on the second and third carbons, so 2,3-dimethylbutane. As we've said before, it doesn't matter which way round they are, okay? I can't put one on the end, but if you think about it, I can put them both on the same carbon, okay? So I could put my two CH3 groups, they're the methyl groups, I could put them here, for example, and here. You could say, well, I could put them here and here as well, but remember that's the same as putting them here and here because they're on the second carbon along no matter which way you look at it. Okay, this has still got a longest chain of four, so it's still something butane, right? It's got two methyl groups, so what kind of branches? Methyl. How many? Two, so dimethyl. And where are they? Well, they're on the second or the third carbon, depending on which way you look at it, but we're going to go for second because that uses lower numbers, so 2,2-dimethylbutane. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well hang on a minute, what if I had a two carbon branch instead of a one carbon branch? What kind of branch would that be? That would now be called an eth aisle. Okay, so if I had a longest chain of four and put a two carbon branch on it, I'm going to do this in green because it doesn't work, right? So there would be a two carbon branch on my second carbon. That would be called an ethyl group. But notice what's happened now. I've created a longest chain of five. So this wouldn't be a ethyl butane, it would actually be a methyl pentane. Okay? Right, so in other words, I've used up all the different possibilities for a four carbon chain. Can I do it with a three? Well, hopefully that's obvious that you can't, because if you've got three, then you've got another three to play with. You can't put them on the ends. If you put them in the middle, there's two of them, you're going to have to extend your chain, right? Four carbons. Okay, so what we did there was we drew and named all the different isomers of C6H14. How many of them were there? Well, there was hexane, there was the 2 methyl pentane and 3 methyl pentane. Okay, I'm not going to write all these names out because it will take a bit longer. And there was 2 2 dimethyl and 2 3 dimethyl butane. Okay, so five different isomers. It's probably worth checking that you can draw and name all of them and check also that you can write their structural formulas out the way we showed earlier and, that, and show yourself that they've got different structural formulas. Okay, C4H10. This is just a little bit of a naming thing. Okay, if I've got four carbons, I can make a longest chain of four and we should know that that's called butane. Okay. I could also have a chain of three carbons and hopefully you now are kind of becoming familiar with the fact that I can't put a one carbon branch on the end because I exchange, extend the chain to a four carbon chain and it becomes the same molecule, not a structural isomer. But I can put a CH3 here. Okay, So this is now hopefully, let's think about what this should be called. The longest chain is three. Longest chain, so prop. What kind of branch has it got? It's got a one carbon branch, so that's methylpropane. I can't put it on the first and third. So in other words, I can only put it on the second. So there's no point really saying that it's 2-methylpropane, because it can only be 2-methylpropane if it's methylpropane. You won't get marked wrong if you write 2-methylpropane, but bear in mind that really it would correctly be called just methylpropane because you don't need the two there. What we're trying to do in these names is cut down on any unnecessary information. <sighs> okay, so it feels like we've been going quite a long time and covered quite a lot, but let's just finish off by talking about structural isomerism in, isomerism in alkenes. Now, we're only concerned with straight chains in SL, so no branching involved. Okay, so with alkenes we're only interested in where the double bond is. Bear in mind, some molecular formulas won't have different structural formulas. So if I've got C3H6, that means three carbons. It's an alkene. I can tell from the formula because it's N2N, not N2N plus 2. So I've got to put a double bond in. As soon as I do that, I realize that there is only one way of arranging the atoms. Right? You might think that that, perhaps, is different to that, okay? 
But if you write the structural formulas out, you'll see they're the same because this will be CH2, CH, CH3, and this will be CH2, starting from that end, CH, CH3. It doesn't matter which end I start from. If I can write the same structural formula, they're the same thing. So they're not different structural formulae. Both got this formula. They're not isomers of one another. This molecule has no isomers. Okay? So the important things to spot with alkenes is going to be a little bit simpler now. We're just looking for the longest chain and where the double bond is. Okay, so we're not worrying about branching. Even though you can have branched isomers, we're keeping it simple. So let's take C6H12. Remember, no branches, so we're only dealing with a chain with six carbons. Okay, let's just not bother filling in the hydrogens just yet because I haven't put the double bonds in yet. So let's say we could put a double bond in here. Okay, we could also put a double bond in here. Right? We could also put a double bond in there. So either in the first, the second, or the third position. However, if I put a double bond in here, I'm now putting it in the second position. So this is not different to the one in green. So I've got three possible places for my double bond in this molecule. And then I'd need to figure out how many hydrogens on each carbon. So let's just deal with the red one, okay, to save a bit of time. So I'd have two on that one, I'd have only one space on that one, two on that one, two on that one, two on that one, three on that one, making 12 hydrogens altogether. Now let's talk about the names, okay? They're all going to be called hexene, okay? Because they've all got six carbons in a row and they're all an alkene. The red one would be called one hexene. The green one would be called two hexene. And the blue one, guess what? It would be called 3-hexene. Why are they called this? Because the carbon atom that the double bond starts from gives us this number. And just bear in mind that you can also call them hex 2-ene. Oops, that was obviously hex 1-ene, sorry. You could call this one hex 2-ene. And you could call the blue one hex Three in, so there's two different places you can put the numbers, okay? But the notation for where the double bond is talks about the carbon that it starts from. So the carbon, the blue one, doesn't start from the fourth; it starts from the third. Remember, we're always going for the lowest number, okay? And remember that numbers are separate, separated from letters by hyphens. Numbers are separated from one another by commas. Okay. I uh, don't know how long that's gone on for, but hopefully not too long, and hopefully you now know what we mean by structural isomers. This tends to be quite a confusing topic, so it's definitely worth practicing, and hopefully just drawing a few of these molecules and checking whether they've got the same structural formulas and naming them will be a good way of doing that for you. But if you've got any questions or comments, as usual, the sooner you come and see me, the better, and uh, if you could post a comment on YouTube, I'd be very grateful indeed.